Welcome to Travels and Tricks. I'm here in Paris, and let me tell you, it's a dream come true. This city has always been on my bucket list, so being here for the first time is incredibly exciting. Today, it's not just about filming a travel vlog. I'm also sharing all the tips and tricks for first timers in Paris who want to experience it on a budget. This is just the beginning of our 15 day adventure through Europe. I want to explore some tourist spots and visit well-known museums, but I also want to spend time wandering the streets and exploring the side alleys. For me, as a first timer, this is the best way to truly enjoy the city's vibe. The architecture here is like a living museum and I can't wait to soak it all in. Often Paris vlogs portray the city as very luxurious and bougie, which is great, but I want to showcase my experience in my own style, at my own pace, and within my budget. So we'll be doing whatever feels right in the moment and seeing how much it all ends up costing. It's going to be a real and realistic travel experience on a budget, but still enjoyable and comfortable, aiming to avoid tourist traps. That's my priority, to fully enjoy while being savvy, and I can't wait to share it all with you. Let's go. I flew from Newark, New Jersey to Orly, Paris on the cheapest ticket I could find, which happened to be on French B. The flight was comfortable, similar to flying with Spirit, where you only pay for the flight. Traveling with just a light backpack made my trip light and easy. If you're interested in finding cheap flights, we have a video on it that I'll uh, link in the description below. When I arrived at Orly, I purchased tickets for Paris transportation from the tourist center. They can give you the best advice, so don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions. You can also buy tickets from machines or ticket offices. A tip for budget travelers. If you travel light, like with a backpack or just a carry-on, public transportation in Paris is exceptional and will save you tons of money compared to taxis. From Orly Airport, I took the Orly bus. It's a direct service to Paris Denfer Rocherio, and it costs me 12 euros, which is a cheaper option than a taxi or private driver. When it comes to getting around Paris, walking and using the metro are your best options. Renting a car is not advisable due to the city's traffic and parking challenges. The metro system is easy to use with over 300 stations covering almost every corner of the city, making it your best friend during your stay in Paris. It's cheap, efficient, and covers the city extensively. You're always within 500 meters of a stop, making it super convenient. Some people might feel unsure about using the metro, but as long as you're cautious, it's a safe and essential mode of transportation, especially on a budget. Consider getting a Paris Visite Pass for unlimited access to the city's public transportation system, including buses, metro, and RER trains. Finally, I'm here in Paris at Orly Airport around 11 a.m. Boarding the Orly bus to Denfert Rocherio, I gaze out the window, taking in the bustling streets and elegant architecture that whiz by. The lively atmosphere is infectious and I can't wait to explore more. Upon reaching Denfert Rocherio, I hop on a metro to my hotel, the Citadine's Apart Hotel Tour Eiffel Paris. It's conveniently located next to the La Motte Piquet Grenelle Metro stop, just a minute away. It's around noon and since my check-in isn't until 3 p.m., I leave my backpack at the hotel and head out. One of the best things about the hotel is its proximity to the Eiffel Tower, just a 15 minute walk away. I'm looking forward to exploring the area and finding some food as I'm quite hungry. Flying with French B meant no free snacks, so I'm eager to indulge in some delicious French cuisine. The street where my hotel is located is full of restaurants, so I'm spoiled for choice. Hungry and excited, I set off to begin my Parisian adventure. As I walk along the street, I notice that all the restaurants have outdoor seating, which adds to the charming Parisian vibe. The cafe culture here is so inviting, with people leisurely sipping coffee and enjoying the ambiance. The bars are lively with locals and tourists alike enjoying a drink and soaking in the atmosphere. By accident, 
I stumble upon a Persian restaurant with a delicious menu and it's full of people. I decide to try the food as I haven't had Persian cuisine for a long time. It turns out to be amazing. Wow, look at that rice. I've missed rice, having gone a month without it. Now, I'm thinking of roaming around and shopping a bit, playing my day by ear. I didn't plan much for this trip, so I'm excited to see where the day takes me. Paris has truly captured my heart, and I can't wait to see what else this city has in store for me. As I explore Paris, I'm amazed by the convenience of the many markets scattered across the city. Walking into these markets, you're greeted by an array of options, from refreshing drinks to delectable snacks, especially the fantastic local wine and cheeses. One of my top travel hacks that I swear by is to pick up some snacks, drinks, or maybe even a salad from one of these markets. Instead of eating out for all three meals, just treat yourself to one meal out I prefer lunch since it is cheaper. It's not only a great way to save money, especially on a 15 day Europe adventure like mine, but it is also fun. Trust me, when you're traveling, every penny saved is a penny earned. All right, it's time to check in and give you a tour of my room. But first, let's talk about staying central in Paris. Paris is split into 20 arrondissements or neighborhoods, each with its own vibe. When visiting for the first time, it's best to stay as central as possible within these arrondissements to avoid long commutes from the suburbs. I stayed at Cité Tour Eiffel Paris in the 15th arrondissement, just a 15 minute walk from the Eiffel Tower. The hotel was spotless and had a kitchen, which saved us a lot of money. Renting an apartment with a kitchen can be a cost-effective choice as it allows you to prepare some meals instead of dining out for every meal. When booking accommodation, I found reading reviews on TripAdvisor or Expedia to be very helpful. Booking well in advance is essential as the best options tend to fill up quickly. As for Airbnb, it can be a great option for larger groups or those who want a kitchen, but I didn't find it significantly cheaper than hotels once you factor in all the fees. For getting around Paris, walking is the best option. I strongly advise against renting a car due to the crazy traffic and parking challenges. I loved walking around the city, exploring different streets and soaking in the vibe. Now, about the Eiffel Tower. For a first time visitor on a budget, you might want to skip going up the tower and instead enjoy the view from the free park behind it. The Arc de Triomphe is another must see where you can walk around and underneath for free. It's around 7 p.m. here, and it's still so bright because sunset in Paris is late. I love how people are just enjoying life, chatting, and eating. It's quite chilly in mid-March, so I'm glad I brought this light jacket. Paris has been an amazing experience so far, and I can't wait to see what else it has in store. Visiting Paris for the first time, I was eager to try a unique experience I read about, having a picnic in a park near the Eiffel Tower. However, the weather was chilly, and to my dismay, the park was under construction with a fence around it. Nevertheless, I didn't let that deter me. I decided to make the most of the situation and stopped by a local cafe for a coffee and croissant. The warmth of the coffee seemed more fitting than a sandwich in the chilly weather. With my snack in hand, I made my way to a nearby park with a view of the Eiffel Tower. Surprisingly, this simple decision turned out to be the highlight of my Parisian adventure. Despite the chill in the air, sitting in the park, sipping my coffee, and admiring the Eiffel Tower felt incredibly natural. I hadn't planned to return at night, but the beauty of the Eiffel Tower encouraged me to do so. Perhaps I'll come back tomorrow. This impromptu picnic didn't cost me a dime, yet it was a simple yet incredibly rewarding experience. After my lovely picnic near the Eiffel Tower, I decided to keep exploring Paris and later enjoyed a quiet dinner back in my room. It was a unique and budget-friendly way to end the day. If someone were to say, you did absolutely nothing but eat and walk around today, I'd say that's pretty much the essence of vacation, right? As the day winds down, I'm feeling grateful for these little moments of sunshine in my day. 
It's not just about what or when I eat. It's about cherishing every moment to the fullest. It's around 11.30 now, and we're just about to chat about our plans for the next two days in Paris before heading to bed to be fresh for tomorrow. Can't wait to see what adventures await. Good morning, day two. I woke up absolutely famished, so I turned to Google Maps and said, find me the nearest croissant, and voila, here we are. Got myself a croissant and a latte for breakfast. Let's dig in. I'm absolutely starving. Let's get this day started. Today, we took a leisurely stroll along the Seine River towards the Eiffel Tower, snapping some beautiful photos despite the light rain. Did you know the Seine stretches 777 kilometers, 483 miles through France, with Paris being its most famous part? It's quite the iconic river, offering a unique view of the city from the water with all those tourist boats cruising along. After all that walking, we stopped for lunch. I couldn't resist trying the onion soup and beef bourguignon, and let me tell you, it was fantastic. The beef was so tender and the flavors were amazing, especially paired with a glass of wine. Now that we finished lunch, we're going to continue exploring the city on foot. Can't wait to see what else Paris has in store for us today. So even though I originally decided to skip going up the Eiffel Tower, my friends convinced me to go for it. I ended up spending 30 euros, but you know what? It was totally worth it, especially at night. The views of Paris from up there are absolutely breathtaking. It made me realize why they call this place the city of light. The whole city just sparkles. After that amazing experience, I was inspired to take a cruise on the Seine River. We went for the tour only option without dinner, which was about 12 euros per person. Let me tell you, it was fantastic. Since we spent more time on the Eiffel Tower, we ended up going for the late night tour, which was still very beautiful with all the lights and landmark buildings illuminated. However, we missed the sunset views from the boat, which would have been great for taking pictures with better lighting. Seeing all the iconic landmarks from the river was incredible. If you ever get the chance, don't pass it up. Good morning, everyone. It's our final day in Paris, and I'm so excited to share the latest leg of my journey with you. Just checked into the Novotel Paris Center, Bercy, for my last night in this beautiful city. Got an amazing deal for my stay here, and the vibe is already fantastic. The hotel is perfectly situated near the Seine River, Bercy Metro Station, and Gare de Lyon train station. You can even rent a bicycle right in front of the hotel. Now, Here's the exciting part. I'm planning to take a leisurely walk from the hotel to the Louvre Museum. The route is incredibly scenic, winding through the charming streets of Paris, alongside the picturesque Seine River, and passing by some of the city's most iconic landmarks and attractions. It's a popular walking route for visitors who want to immerse themselves in the beauty of Paris on foot. And if you happen to feel a bit weary along the way, I highly recommend stopping for some hot chocolate and a croissant. They're simply the best here and will give you the energy boost you need to continue your adventure. Standing in Paris, surrounded by the grandeur of the Hotel de Ville or City Hall is truly awe-inspiring. This historic building situated along the Seine River is not just an administrative center, it's a symbol of Parisian history. Built by architects Theodore Ballou and Edouard de Pertus, the Hotel de Ville replaced its predecessor destroyed during the Paris Commune in 1871. Since 1357, it has served as Paris's city hall. The square in front, once Place de Greve, is now Place de l'Hotel de Ville, a vibrant hub for exhibitions and cultural events. In 2024, this square will host the start of the Paris 2024 Olympic Games Marathon, adding another chapter to its rich history. When I explored Paris, I quickly realized that planning your museum visits is key. For me, the Louvre was a must-see. I mean, you can't go to Paris and miss the Mona Lisa, right? 
While some of my friends were eager to visit the Musée d'Orsay, I decided to save it for a future trip, knowing I'll be back to this beautiful city. The Louvre, with its incredible art collection, was truly a highlight. I recommend planning your museum visits carefully and taking advantage of any discounts or free days. Some museums offer free entry on the first Sunday of the month, which is a great money-saving tip. Also, buying your tickets in advance is a smart move to avoid the long lines. Trust me, the lines for those without tickets can be incredibly long. It's also important to keep your belongings safe, especially in busy tourist areas. Using a crossbody bag can help prevent pickpocketing. Overall, exploring Paris's museums was a fantastic experience, and I highly recommend including them in your itinerary. Don't forget to take some time to walk around the buildings. The Louvre Pyramid is particularly impressive. You might be wondering how long it takes to see all the pieces. Based on my experience, it took me nearly a day to see all the art I wanted to see at the Louvre. I didn't do all my research beforehand and learned as I went, figuring out where to go and what to see. On the other hand, a friend of mine managed it with some advanced research in under two hours, since she's not a fan of museums, but still wanted to see the most iconic ones by focusing on the must-see pieces and using an entrance other than the pyramid like the carousel. If you have the time, you could easily spend days exploring everything the Louvre has to offer. Most visitors are satisfied with seeing the Mona Lisa, maybe the Venus de Milo, and a couple of other famous works if they have specific pieces in mind. After our incredible time at the Louvre, we decided to head back to our hotel for some well-deserved rest before embarking on a leisurely stroll along the iconic Champs-Élysées. Getting there was a breeze with just a two euro ticket from Bercy Station, which was conveniently located just a two minute walk from our hotel. As we walked, the avenue led us directly to the majestic Arc de Triomphe, standing proudly in the middle of a major intersection at the end of the famous street. This iconic monument has a rich history built to honor those who fought and died for France in the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars. It stands as a symbol of French national pride and resilience. The Champs-Élysées truly is a Parisian gem, visited by nearly 300,000 people daily. Can you believe it? This one mile stretch is lined with high-end fashion stores, cozy cafes, and even familiar spots like Five Guys. Despite its fame, the Champs-Élysées continues to captivate me with its charm and vibrancy. Some of my friends suggest skipping it, but for me, it's an essential Parisian experience. Plus, it's free. Just walking and window shopping along this iconic avenue is a delight. Yes, it can get crowded, but the wide pavements make it easy to navigate and enjoy. The energy here is infectious. In the end, Paris offers a wealth of experiences, each one unique and memorable in its own way, if you ever visit, especially for the first time, and if you want to stay on budget and just get the vibe, just walk around, trust me, you'll enjoy it. For me, the whole city feels like a big museum of art and architecture. It's all about embracing the city's charm and discovering your own hidden gems amidst the bustling streets and iconic landmarks. Wow. Our time in Paris was absolutely incredible, full of unforgettable moments and new discoveries. From wandering through the Louvre's halls to taking in the beauty of the Champs-Élysées, every experience was like a dream, and the Eiffel Tower at night? It's a sight that will stay with me forever. I'm curious, what's the one place in Paris you're most looking forward to seeing? Or if you've been, what's your favorite memory? And hey, do you have any secret tips for saving money in the city of love? Share your thoughts in the comments below and let's keep this adventure going strong. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more exciting travel tips and adventures. Next up, Geneva, Switzerland by train, get ready for more breathtaking views and unforgettable moments. Can't wait to see you there.